Hi, and welcome to Copic in the Craft Room. I have um, kind of a different tutorial today. This is a digital image by Jeremiah Kettner, and I found him on Etsy. One of the things I really love, first of all, the faces that he is drawing are stunning. They really are beautiful. But one of the things he does is he offers his images in both what appears to be kind of a pencil line, so very light gray, and then also the dark black that a lot of stampers are used to. Um, I'm not gonna attempt a no line drawing with this today. I'm not gonna try to make all those lines disappear, but because of the lightness of the, um, the work that he's done, because of the way he's created the JPEG that I printed from, with that light gray line, it's gonna make some of those lines disappear. Um, I'm gonna go for some really unique color combinations today, really fair skin with some um, blue-violet hair. Just something totally different, and part of the reason, or the main reason for that, is that I'm gonna use our newest color of multi-liner. Copic came out with another color, lavender, and I got was lucky enough to get a couple of these. I have a 0.3 and a 0.5. So that 0.3 is gonna be my finer tip and the 0.5 is a broader tip. But what I thought is I'd go ahead and color her hair and then maybe add just some details on top with the Copic Multiliner. So I'm gonna start with her face, um, work through that, and then go into her hair. Um, I am not gonna work, I'm gonna probably work right down to this necklace, but she has got so much detail going on um, with the stuff around her head and then the necklace and bodice, I just, I'm not gonna attack that today. Um, I already know just the skin and hair is gonna take me a good chunk of time. It's a more complicated advanced image. So um, even though I'm keeping color combos very simple, it's gonna take me more time. So I'm gonna go ahead and speed up and get going on that. And as always, I will try to include um, names, information, um, and obviously, as I go, I'll talk you through it. So we'll close, get a little closer to that image and get started. So this is gonna be super fast so we can get all of this done. I am starting with R triple zero on her face and I am filling in the entire area. This is a larger face and so it does give me the opportunity to do a lot more um, detail in the shading and go for more depth. I don't do a super complicated color combination on her skin today, but you could. Um, I kept it, kept it very fair. R01 is coming in with my first layer of shading, um, and I am kind of emphasizing the contours you would see on her face in around her eye because we know that sinks in around her nose, under her chin, under her nose, around the second eye and then I decide that my light source is going to come in from that right hand side so my left side gets darker so even though I still have that shading on the right hand side the left is going to be a little bit heavier I go up into the hair and fringe because I know that's going to be darker as well I go back to our triple zero and smooth that out this is a pretty good jump and so I've got a good amount of depth happening but that means I also do need to do some blending and it's going to take a little bit longer so I really do some circling right on top where the two of those meet. And then E93 I'm bringing in for some cheek color and I just draw right in on top and I add it to her lips. Then I'm fading that back in with R01 and R000 um, for the cheek color. BV000 is going in for my deepest shadows. Notice I have everything blended and this comes in on top as my last layer. I really do that only right around those eyes. I could go back and do a little more um, under her hair or under her chin, but I chose just to do it there. B63 is what I'm basing the iris and the pupil in on her eye. Because I printed it this out in that gray, almost pencil looking um, image, it's really light, so I have to go over all of it. B66 is the pupil color, so this is the darker part of her eye, normally black. But I'm going with B66, and I'm darkening that po top portion of the iris. And then with B63, I'm going in and actually coloring even on the whites of her eyes, right up underneath the lid to add that shading. 
bv quadruple zero. So that was four zeros is basing the hair, and I'm going to base the entire head of hair. This is a very, very light blue violet. And this is just giving me my base color. I debated a lot about where I should leave open so you could see through those strands of hair and where I should close off. So I did close off a little more over her shoulder, and I'm not sure if I should have or not, but or the artist intent there. I'm going to do a lot of this series. So it's the exact, the natural blending group stepping up VV with three zeros is next. Just adding that first layer of texture. Notice I'm up on the tip of my nib and already flicking. These can be a little bit broader flicks at this point since it's my first layer and I know I'm going to do a whole bunch of layers. And this takes some time because the artist has gone through and done strands of hair or sections of hair. So I'm having to go in and flick into each section from the top and then from the bottom some. Those little tiny tendrils that go out into curls, I don't do a whole lot along those. I go along the length, but the very tips I actually leave alone. BV double zero or two zeros is next. Again, from the crown of the head down and working from all those sections down and then I also work from the bottom up. So on a lot of these I'm going in two directions just like we do on most hair. Pushing from the top down and the bottom up. The exception on this side of hair is I'm not going into those little curls at the end of her tendrils. I'm leaving those really light because I know that they're going to capture light and stay lighter. BV01, I'm just continuing down the series. So you would not need to do every single one of these colors. I chose to because I have them all and I knew I was building up to something. Um, but you could skip every other one for sure. This is, I'm being a little silly today and adding all the colors because I really kind of had fun enjoy, um, working with that. You can see I took the other cap or the other end off this marker. B02, because as I was coloring that, B01 started to look really wet and it was going to blob. So I took the other end off. I've moved on to B02 though. This one's doing pretty good. I'm going into those darkest areas at this point only, right around her neck, right into those deepest little top edges of hair. Can you see I'm flicking now with that B04 just in those darkest areas. There are just not many spots that I'm going to add that, but it's right around her face, right around her neck, adding some real layers into those bangs and fringes and tendrils. So really pushing some of those areas back now with that B04 to add depth. I'm going back with BV00. So I notice I skipped a couple. I'm going back so I can soften this up a little bit. And BV02 just for a few more flicks and then I add her eyebrows and I do a tiny bit of flick on her eyelashes. They were so light in that gray pencil looking ink that I can't see them anymore. So I've added those back in with my BV02, then B63 on the eyes and a little B02 on both of those eyes with B63 to kind of brighten them up. I have a Copic Multiliner now. This is our brand new color, Lavender, in a .3 nib size. It comes in four different nib sizes. This is the .3, and I'm adding it in on top in those darkest areas. So this is going to be a very tight line. It's not going to blend in at all. It's going to sit on top. And I did not do any testing, so I'm just trying this out for the first time to see how I like this on top of this. Um, and I'm not sure it's looking a little bit streaky and stand out, so I might have to do some more work on top of it. But I do like the color and the, the detail. So I'm actually coming in now with my B66 or B66. It's a whole darker shade, and obviously it's blue instead of blue violet. Um, but I'm going in just those areas that have the multi liner, and then B63 to soften it back in just a little bit. Add that little bit of that blue into some of those other areas that are a little bit lighter, but soften up the darker B66. 
and now I'm actually liking that multi-liner a whole lot more. BV02, again, I'm going to add a little bit of darkness into some of those lighter tendrils. They got so dark in some of the, the dark areas that I felt like I needed to darken those up. A little BV quadruple zero to clean up some of those curls. And BV01, I come back and add the freckles. I don't want to lose those. So I think I am going to stop here. Um, obviously, I spent a lot of time on both the skin and hair. Um, part of this, or the main reason for this, is this is one of the images, or this is something I rarely do. I did not do a lot of experimenting beforehand. So I did not do a test run of this image. I just kind of started from scratch, um, hoped I had the colors that I wanted. Um, so I did a lot of playing back and forth on her hair and on her skin tones to get what I was going for. Um, I will be honest and say I had one run that didn't work and so I started over again. So this was the second run at it. Didn't learn my lesson, still played around. For the most part, I'm actually extremely happy with how she turned out. Um, I do like the layering in with the multi-liners. I did end up going back obviously in the video and get darker on top of some of that multi-liner um, with some blues, those B6s, um, to add a little bit deeper color on top of it so it didn't stand out quite so much. Um, I still love the texture that it adds, reinforcing some of the lines that the artist had placed in there. So end result, I am extremely excited about how she turned out and obviously I'm not done with her yet. I will spend some more time and finish her out, um, but really pleased with how she turned out. Thank you for joining me as usual here at Copic in the Craft Room. I hope you have a happy, colorful week.